The cross product was defined to be a vector. Remember that vectors are quantities that have both a magnitude and a direction. We're going to start by looking at the magnitude. The algebra for this is neither pretty nor insightful, but fortunately the book shows you all the steps. We're going to go straight to the result. The magnitude of u cross v is equal to the length of u times the length of v times the sine of the angle between them. Again, the angle between vectors is defined to be the angle created when the tails are put together. We're going to focus on the consequences of this formula. The first thing to notice is that if we combine the length of v and sine of theta into a single term, we end up with something geometric. If we draw out the vectors like this, it turns out that the length of v times sine theta gives you the distance from the tip of v to the line formed by u. The same thing works if we combine the length of u with sine of theta instead. If this feels kind of like what we did with vector projections, that's because it is similar to vector projection. The difference is that with vector projections, we usually didn't have the angle theta in hand. And so we would have to use the dot product to go get it, and that would end up being a bunch of extra steps. But there are definitely some geometric relationships here that are interesting to explore. But back to the cross product. If we draw out the parallelogram formed by the vectors u and v, we can see that the length of the cross product corresponds to the area of the parallelogram. We're going to use this fact much later in class, so don't lose track of this relationship. We can also draw a triangle by connecting the tips of the vectors, and the area of this triangle is half the length of the cross product because it's half the area of the parallelogram. This will be helpful when working through some of the exercises. There's a special case of the area picture, which is when the two vectors are parallel to each other. We can think of this as the area of the parallelogram collapsing to zero, which would make the magnitude of the cross product equal to zero. Students sometimes get worried when they get a zero because they think they did something wrong. Getting a zero here does not automatically mean you made a mistake. It just means that the vectors are parallel. So now that we know about the magnitude of the cross product, what about its direction? It turns out that if you calculate u dot u cross v and v dot u cross v, you will get zero. The book shows the details of this calculation. If the dot product of two vectors is zero, then the vectors are perpendicular. This means that u cross v is perpendicular to both u and v. Notice that if u and v are not parallel to each other, then together they define a plane. There are only two directions that are perpendicular to the plane, and the correct one is the one that follows the right-hand rule. Try to match your hand to this diagram. Point the index finger of your right hand to the right, and point your middle finger at the screen. Then your thumb should match the black vector. If the vectors are parallel to each other, then the cross product is zero. From the previous section, we know that the magnitude of the cross product of parallel vectors will be zero, and so that makes the direction irrelevant. But with this new perspective, we can see that two parallel vectors don't even form a plane, so it doesn't make sense that there would be one particular direction for the cross product to point. The result is simply that you get the zero vector. It's sometimes the case that we use the vector n to talk about a vector that's perpendicular to a surface. n stands for normal, which in this context just means perpendicular to the surface. The vector n is usually a unit vector, so you often hear it referred to as the unit normal vector. And so with this, we get another formula for the cross product. The vector n is implied to be the normal to the plane formed by u and v following the right-hand rule. Notice that this formula isn't saying much more than the previous formula. The normal vector is just saying what direction the cross product points, and the length is the same value we saw earlier. But the addition of this direction does create a three-dimensional picture for us that we didn't have when we were just looking at the magnitude. With two vectors, we can form a parallelogram. Notice that this is a flat object. With a third vector, we can get a volume by branching out into a third dimension. The use of three vectors forms a parallel pipid. This is just the natural generalization of a parallelogram. It can be thought of as a box with slanted sides. We can calculate the volume of a parallel pipid by using the cross product and the dot product together. The volume of the parallel pipid formed by the vectors u, v, and w is the absolute value of u cross v dot w. We won't go into the details, but the idea is that the u cross v part gives us the area of the parallelogram that makes the base and then the dot product of the unit normal vector with w gives us the height. While this formula is useful and uses the concepts and formulas of the last couple sections, it's not important to this class, so it's probably not one that's worth memorizing even though it's not a difficult one to remember. If you bump into an application of it down the line, you could always look it up then. 
The book has a brief section that talks about the similarities and differences between the dot product and the cross product. It's worth thinking through this to help the ideas sink in more deeply. The dot product results in a scalar, and the cross product results in a vector. The dot product is commutative, but the cross product is not. Technically, we would say that the cross product is anti-commutative, or skew-commutative, because you get the negative result when you swap the order. The dot product is related to the cosine of the angle between the vectors, and the cross product is related to the sine of the angle between the vectors. We can see that these formulas are otherwise very similar to each other. If the dot product is zero, then the vectors are orthogonal to each other. If the cross product is zero, then the vectors are parallel to each other. Recognizing these four properties helps us to see how these two products are both similar and different. You will want to be very familiar with all of these properties.